Hey friends, it's Riska and welcome back to another installment in my Deluge video manual where I'll be showing you pretty much everything I know about using the Synthstrom Deluge. In the last video, we looked at the arranger view so that we could arrange our track from left to right, much like you would in a traditional door. And in this video, we're finally going to be taking a look at the sampling engine. We're really starting to get into the thick of things now where we're going to be creating our own sounds and mangling incoming audio sources. So this video is primarily going to focus on the sampling engine. And then the next video should focus a little bit more on audio clips and looping before we finally dive into the synth engine. Now, there is a lot of crossover between all of those things. Uh, some of the features of the synth engine are used to control some of the features of the sampling engine and so on and so forth. So I'm going to try my best to explain things as they sort of pop up one by one. We're going to focus primarily on really everything there is about sampling into the deluge, but everything in regards to recording in samples and mangling audio tracks or having audio specific tracks, we're going to leave for the next video where we'll be going over that. So there are a lot of different features about sampling in the deluge and it works slightly differently depending on how you're bringing them in. So let's just jump straight into the thick of things and talk about loading samples in using a kit track. Now, the reason we want to use a kit track for this is because having a sample on an individual kit row allows us to do a few different things about sort of just playing it back and uh, time stretching it and whatnot. Whereas if we were to load a sample into a synth track, it's going to allow us to play that sample chromatically, much like you would on a regular keyboard. So we'll get up to that soon. For now, let's just focus on importing samples to kit tracks. So now we're in a kit track and we basically have our stock drum kit. What I'm gonna do is press shift and kit and that's going to create a new drum kit. Now, straight away, we've entered the folder structure on the SD card that we have inserted into the deluge. Now, everybody sets up their SD card slightly differently. The way I like to approach it is by default, there's a few folders. We've got artists, clips, drums. Um, now I have a multi sample library in here, which we'll go into later in this video. And then we have recordings, resamples, I have a folder called risk it where I usually throw in uh, everything that I personally have contributed to this SD card goes in my risk it folder. And I also have waves at the end for wavetables. So what I'm going to do is go into my risk it folder and I have a bunch of different sample packs loaded in here. What I'm looking for in this particular case is just a standard drum beat that we can listen to. Now I have a folder in drum and bass called loops go to drum loops and remember if you're finding the scrolling text is a little bit annoying just remember that you can use the scrolling wheel up here just to sort of scrub back and forth and take your time with it so this is the first sample in this folder what we're looking at here with all of this white information is the audio wave file but it's displayed at, you know, obviously a lower resolution so that it can fit across these pads. If we want to browse more of the samples in this folder, we just turn the select knob. I'm just going to go with the first one and press select. So now that we've done that, we're still in the kit track and we can see that we only have one sound source in here because none of these other pads are lit up. If we audition it, that's our sound. Now, another way that we could have done that is by going shift and browse over here. Brings this into the same section. And just notice that when I'm doing that, whenever you go to browse your library, it's always going to go back to the same place that you last left off. I myself usually just find myself holding down an audition pad and pressing load. So a lot of the options available to us for sample mangling happen over here underneath sample one. Now we can actually load a couple of different samples into here because the samples are loaded into the oscillators of synth engine. But uh, let's not get too crazy with that right now. Let's for starters look at the sample mode. So as mentioned in previous videos, we can access these shortcuts by holding shift 
and pressing the shortcut, or we can press the audition pad and press the shortcut. So right now we're in mode and we can see that this mode is set to cut. Basically what cut means is that the sample is going to play, but as soon as the note is let go or cut short, it's going to cut off. Just like that. If we place this sample down into the note view and cut it off here, it's going to play to there and then stop. Next up, we have once. This basically means that as soon as this note is triggered, the sample will play through just once and it will play the entire way through regardless of the length of the note. So if we select that, place it down. There you go. Now, because of the length of our bar, we could hear that it reached the, the end of this sequence and loops back and triggered it again. So we're not going to mess around with that just yet. We'll come back to that. For now, let's remove that note, press shift and mode. <laughs> Wait for that sample to stop playing. Now we'll switch to loop. Basically, what loop means is that the sample will loop indefinitely until the note is finished or until it's cut off. So if we place this down and zoom out, we only have one bar to work with here. So what I'm going to do is extend this to something about maybe four bars. We'll zoom all the way out and place this down. So we can see that the length of this sample is three bars long. Here's an extra bar we have at the end. So I'm going to extend that all the way to the end here. And we'll notice that the sample will play all the way to where it stops and then it's going to loop back to the start position for the final bar. Let's remove that for now and look at the final mode, which is stretch. Now I use stretch an awful lot. It's really awesome. Basically, if we place our clip down, it's going to stretch it to where we tell it to go. Now, right now it's filling our entire four bars. So if we hit play, you'll notice that it's playing a little bit slower because it's been stretched longer than what it is. If we were to bring this back down to where it originally stops, sounds back to normal. Let's make it go for two bars long. So you can see what we're starting to do here. This is basically time stretching your sample to fit in time with the tempo of your song. So if I stretch this back out for four bars and turned on our metronome and had a listen, you'll hear that it syncs up with our metronome. Now, by default, the deluge is time stretching this with the highest amount of interpolation it has to offer, or in other words, the highest amount of quality it has to offer. Maybe you don't need that on every single sample that you're loading in because it will eventually take up more CPU power. So you do have some options here for the interpolation. Right now it's set to sync, which is high quality. It's not too bad, it does sound a little flammy. But if we turn it to line, it's going to sound slightly worse. So let's leave that set to sync for now. Now, another thing about time stretching our sample, if we were to play this as is, have a listen. Great, let's shorten that to half the speed. Right, at the moment, it sounds to me like it's recording at the same pitch. So we'll set that back. So if we activate our pitch and speed control here, we have a couple of different options. We have independent and linked. Independent means that the pitch is going to stay the same regardless of the speed or the time stretching that we are applying, like this. However, if we turn on linked, that means that the pitch is going to be linked to the speed, much like it would in a traditional sampler. 
So because we have time stretched this out, it's going to sound lower in pitch. If we were to make this go to two bars, you'll notice that it is higher in pitch. So that can be really useful to you. Sometimes having things be independent of pitch and speed, like if we listen to this independently, you'll notice the snare especially sounds rather flammy. Almost like there's a slight delay on the sound, but if we make it linked, it sounds a little bit better. So both have their use cases, but it's entirely up to you what you want to do. I'm going to leave mine as linked for now. Now, we don't just have to control the speed using the time stretching option either. If we were to switch the mode back to cut, for example, we can actually use this speed control to change the speed of the sample. I'm going to set mine back to stretch for now and change this pitch and speed to be linked. One final thing that we have here is the reverse option, which as it says on the tin, just changes our sample to play in reverse. Now, so far we've looked at time stretching a sample to suit the tempo of our song. But let's say we wanted the tempo of our song to suit the length of a sample that we're importing. So to demonstrate this, I am going to quickly go into audio file territory, which I'm going to be going into deeper in a later video. But basically all we need to do is press song and we want to create a new audio track. Now, obviously we don't have a button up here for creating audio tracks. So the way we do that is hold down on a clip row and press the select knob in and we'll see audio has been created. Now we'll open up that audio tab, press shift and browse. There's our sample. Let's press okay and load that in. Let's go back to song view and we'll remove our initial sample clip. So now we're just left with this audio track. Now we can hear that it is stretching to suit the tempo of our song. Basically, we want to make our song suit the tempo of our audio clip. So the way that we're going to do that is press and hold the tempo knob and then press this track. Now BPM 170 has popped up and it's all in sync. That's really, really awesome stuff. It's good to know. Just keep in mind that audio tracks have a little bit less uh, control over what you can and can't do with certain samples. But alternatively, you could just use it to find the tempo of a sample in a separate project and then bring that into something that you want to create. I'm going to go ahead and start a new project for the rest of this. So now we're back to our default 120. Now let's load a few different samples in. I'm going to press shift and kit, go back. And basically what I want to do is create a lo-fi drum kit. So I'm going to navigate back to my sample library. I have a folder in here called lo-fi toolkit. It was a free sample pack. Now we have drum loops, but if I scroll down, we also have drum one shots. So let's find our kick samples. Maybe this one. Now I want to load in a snare. So we hold the audition pad and press load. Go back, go to snares.
Let's load in a closed hi-hat. Go to symbols, closed. And let's load in an open hi-hat. So this is similar to the way that standard drum kits are created on the deluge. And now we can start placing down notes. For lo-fi, obviously we probably want a bit of a lower tempo. And we'll add some swing. And we can manipulate these the same way that we would any other sound using the effects and the envelopes and LFOs and so on. Now let's throw in a couple of open hi-hats here. So straight away, we can hear that this hi-hat sample bleeds over into our closed hi-hat sample, which is pretty unrealistic. And obviously we wanna set up a choke group so that these two sounds can't play at the same time and they'll cancel each other out. So the way we would do that is hold shift and press polyphony. At the moment it's set to auto, can change it to poly, mono, legato, or choke. If we press choke, it's now assigned to a choke group. We also need to do this for our other hi-hat as well. So now we can hear that that gets cut off. If we really wanna hear it up close, let's move it a little bit closer. So that's gonna be really important if you are using samples to build up your own drum kits. Finally, if we wanted to go ahead and save this drum kit, all we need to do is hold save and press kit. It's going to ask us to name it. So right now, uh, the, the final kit in this pack is kit number 43 because there are 43 of them, but I'm just going to go ahead and name mine Lo-Fi. Press OK. And now that clip has been saved. So we could switch to a different jump kit. But if I go to the end of my list by scrolling back, so instead of scrolling forward all the way through the 43 different jump kits, we'll just scroll backwards. And now we can see Lo-Fi is there. This is a really, really useful way of loading in a ton of different samples to your drum kits, having them laid out the way you want them to be, and then quickly saving a preset so you can make multiple songs with them. Now, something else you might want to do is load in samples that are split up across your pads. So we'll switch to kit again. We'll go shift kit to create a new one. And let's locate a kind of longish sort of sample. I have some vocal samples in here from different packs. So now that we've located the sample, I want to split it across several different pads at once. What we're going to do is long press the select button and we'll see that we can switch between all or slice. We'll scroll to slice, let go and then press again. And still while holding down, we want to choose how many slices. Now default at is at 16. Maybe I just want it to happen across the first eight. So I'm going to scroll down to eight, 
and then confirm. Now we can place these in however we want, in whatever order, and make something completely new. Now keep in mind that when you're working with samples, even in kit tracks, we don't have access to the isomorphic keyboard layout. So if you want to play anything, you need to play it using these audition pads. Don't forget that we can still apply a ton of effects to all of these at once by pressing effect entire. So we'll hit play and maybe throw in some reverb or delay. But you need to also keep in mind that if you want to edit like some of the other controls such as your polyphony or the pitch of these samples you're going to need to do that individually for each row that might be important to you if you need to get for example these vocals to be in key with something that you've already created now fortunately we can switch to custom one custom one by default edits the pitch of your samples and we have effect entire on so let's have a listen If we wanted to change the sample mode of each of these as well, we would need to make sure that the sound source is selected, go into mode, and then say if we wanted to cut, loop, stretch, and so on and so forth. There have been a couple of instances where I've loaded in guitar or vocal samples to a track that I've already been working on, and I don't want to change the key and scale of everything else that I've set up in my track, so I have to manually go into samples that I've chopped up like this, press shift and transpose, which is in the synth section. However, the remember what I said earlier, the samples are loaded into the oscillators, so we press shift and transpose, and then you have a lot more control over which tones or semitones your sound is being trans up, transposed up by. And you can scroll across with this knob to get even finer control and go up by cents instead of semitones. So for example, Just keep in mind while doing that, that you may need to go into your pitch and speed settings to ensure that the pitch isn't being linked to the speed or the pitch of the sound. Just like we did earlier with that drum beat. Now there is something else that's really important about uh, manipulating samples and audio tracks, and that is the waveform view. But rather than look at that with this in the context of a drum track, we're going to go back to our song and let's load in a bass sample. But this time we're going to load it into this synth track instead. So I'm going to press shift and synth to create a new synth track. Now remember, we can press shift and browse to browse for a new sample. We could also press shift and type on the synth and we could switch it from a square wave to a sample. Or alternatively, we can just press on this pad and press load and it's going to say bottom to top. And it's automatically entered the browser for us. Now I have a particularly favorite drum sound that I like living in one of my sample packs down here. I got this from the XOXO Samplified Library. This one in particular. I'm going to change my scale to Dorian, just so it sounds a bit cooler. And just for all of you mobile users out there, I might add on a tiny bit of saturation to this sound just so that it cuts through any phone speakers that don't have a lot of bass in them. Hopefully you can hear that.
So you may have already noticed that because we loaded this into a synth track and not a kit track, we're able to play this chromatically. We can also enter the isomorphic keyboard layout now and play this like any other instrument. And rather than laying things out like you would in a drum kit, of course, we can sequence notes using the piano roll editor. I'm going to turn off that vocal track for now. So we still have the same amount of options available to us that we did when we created samples using a kit track. And just remember that you can go really crazy with these samples. You can apply any effects you want. You can adjust the envelopes of these, which I did demonstrate a little bit in the effects video. You're welcome to go back and check that out. You can use the mod matrix and yeah, have a lot of creative control over your sounds. This being a bass track, I want to set the polyphony to mono so that uh, when a new note is entered, it cuts off another one. So by default, we can hear that our C3 note, the bass sounds like this. But if we go up to C4 or 5, for example, we'll hear that it's a little bit shorter. So going back to what we looked at earlier with the pitch and the speed control, we can change that. So we can say we want it to be independent. But you'll notice the higher you go, uh, because it is now associating the speed and the pitch together, it's sort of stretching that sound out and you'll get a few little artifacts in the sound. So I'm going to leave it to linked for now. Usually for bass, I want to be playing around in this territory anyway. And don't forget to have a play around with your sample modes. At the moment, mine's set to cut. So as soon as a note lets go, it is cut off. But you might want to change things to play through just once, probably not loop for this one, or stretch. I'm going to leave this one as cut. And let's enter in a bit of a bass groove. So what I want to do is make this two bars long and I'm really kicking myself for not really demonstrating this properly in the sequence of video. But I've once demonstrated that if you press record and then play, you'll get a count in and then you'll be able to start recording straight away. However, that recording will go on indefinitely from that point onwards. However, if we play first and then hit the record button, it's only going to record in the set length of our sequence. So for example, if I press record and then play, we'll get our count in. This marker is red and once it reaches the end of this, it's going to create another set of bars and keep on doing that until we finished our recording. So I'm going to set this back to two bars for now. We're going to hit play and now we'll hit record. This marker is still white. So anything we add in here is just going to happen across those two bars. Let's fix up the timing a little bit. Awesome. Also, I was going to save this part for the synthesizer section. Uh, however, just remember that uh, Portamento is supported with your samples as well. Um, so this is going to sound bad, but just as an example, if I were to throw in an extra note up here that overlaps on top of this one, and we turn up our Portamento, you'll hear that the note slides up into that new note. get some really funky grooves doing that.
Now with the sample selected, let's hit shift and go to waveform. So what we're looking at here is the waveform of our sound. The green marker indicates the starting point and the red marker indicates the end point. We can see that the white marker here is showing how this sample is being triggered and how far it's going into the loop. We can even press in and zoom in to get a higher resolution. This is a pretty stock standard waveform, so maybe we'll load up something a little bit crazier. We'll go back into song view and let's load something else into a synth track. Remember, shift synth to create a new one and let's load something in. Let's have a look at this sound. So what I want to do is press shift and waveform. And now we can have a listen to the sound and see where the sample is playing to. Let's zoom in for a bit of extra resolution here. So we can see that the green marker is flashing. If we were to tap anywhere here and bring it forward, we can change the starting point of this loop. If we were to zoom out, we'll tap the end point and maybe we want to bring it up to about here. Maybe even closer. We can zoom in and go really, really close with this. Now, if we were to press shift and sample mode and change this to loop, go back into our waveform view. We can get some really funky results. Just remember that we can resample this at any time we want as well and record all of this sound to be mangled up even more later on, but we're gonna have a look at resampling in a minute. Now I'm gonna go back into the sound here. Right now it's set to loop, but it cuts off as soon as we let go. So I want to change this to once for now and have a listen. Great. So let's press shift and waveform. And basically our sound is playing from beginning to end. Basically what I want to set up is so that when I hold this note down, I want it to loop for a small part before continuing on after I let go. So the way that we can do that is grab the end point and while it's being held down, we'll click anywhere up here. And now we get a purple point. We'll grab this green one and click anywhere and get a blue one. Basically, this is our now a loop section. So as soon as I hold this down and it hits this purple marker, it's going to loop back between the blue and the purple sections before continuing on when we let go. Now, obviously that's not exactly the sound we want. We want to find something that loops kind of nicely. I'm thinking maybe here. I'll grab this purple one and move it to here. Now you may need to zoom in and get some better resolution as you're doing this because finding that sweet spot can be slightly tricky sometimes. basically trying to cut out that really loud section that's coming in every time it hits the blue marker. Seems to be about there. 
So maybe this isn't the best sound to demonstrate this with. Obviously, we're still getting a little bit of clicking and it's quite an annoying sound overall. I don't even think I'd use it. Uh, not especially for like lo-fi type of music. However, there are definitely samples that you can load in here and set up different loop points and get some really creative and interesting results. When I get up to creating the workflow videos that I'm hoping to do at the end of this series, there's definitely some really cool stuff you can do here in trying to almost emulate some granular synthesis, but we're not going to get into that in this video. I'm just going to filter the sound down for a little bit. At the moment, after applying some effects with filters and whatnot, the sound sounds like this. Just turn the sustain down slightly. And maybe the decay. Great, so after playing around with the effects and some of the envelopes, now the sound sounds a lot more lo-fi friendly. So I'm going to play our beat and we'll activate record. And at the start of the loop, we'll start playing something and see what we can come up with. Just for fun, I have a feeling that a phaser might sound really, really good with this. So we're nearly reaching the end here of the sample video. There's just one more thing that I wanted to go over that's really special about the deluge and that is multi-sampling. So we've seen that when we create clips like this and we go higher up and uh, our samples are sort of time stretch, things start to fall apart slightly. <laughs> But the Deluge supports something called multi-sampling. Multi-sampling essentially takes a bunch of different samples from one instrument. Let's say, for example, every single key on a piano, or most of the keys at least on a piano. And then the Deluge will load in all of those samples, spread them across the entire keyboard of its library, and try its best to interpolate any gaps that are in there to try and give you the most authentic representation of that sample. That means that as you're going up and down in, in pitch, the sample isn't being stretched or warped in unnatural ways. Now to do this, you do need to go online and download some multi samples. There are tons out there, just like downloading any sample pack, but to load them into the deluge, we'll just create a new track here. We wanna press shift and synth, and now let's press an audition pad and load. It's gonna say bottom to top, meaning that it's going to load from the bottom octave to the top octave. Now what I wanna do is go back in my folder structure and outside here, I have a folder called multi samples. We'll enter into that. And here's one called upright piano. 
If I go in there, there's folder one, two, and three. We can jump into these, but basically they're kind of set to different velocities. So folder one is quite quiet. You can barely hear it. But if we go into folder three, it's at a much higher velocity. So I'm gonna jump back and make sure I'm on that folder full of samples and we'll press and hold down on this and it says multi. Let's press again to confirm. It'll load for a second. And now it has loaded that multi sample across the entire octave range of the deluge. And it sounds really natural, just like a real piano. Let's turn up the volume of this a little bit. And just like any other sample, we can mess around with this in a bunch of different ways. And you know, we could play some chords over the top of our track. If we wanted that to be a little bit louder, we could throw on some extra saturation. But yeah, lots of different things that you can do, obviously. But um, I think that's pretty much covered 90% of the sampling engine. Hey, sorry for the weird transition there, but I completely forgot to talk about resampling when I reached the end of this video. So I've just come back, set everything up again, and I'm just going to go over resampling. Also, sorry if you can hear a baby bird screeching in the background. Um, he seems to be hanging right outside my door. So sorry if the microphone's picking that up. Resampling is a really powerful feature that allows you to basically sample the entire audio output of the deluge and save it as a WAV file to your SD card. There's a bunch of different use cases for this. For example, you might want to resample a particular sound so that you can apply further effects processing on it. You also might want to jump into an arranger view and record the entire audio and save it as a single WAV file to your SD card. That way you can pop it out and upload it online for other people to listen to. There's a couple of different ways to go about resampling, so let's explore them all. I have an old track here that I never really finished, but I've brought it up basically because we've got all of these clips to use. And we also have the arranger view to explore as well. Just as a quick demo for what it sounds like, uh, I don't know, we'll play it from here. So one way that we can resample audio, for example, is to resample instantly. Basically, an instantaneous resample is going to start resampling right away, whether you have audio playing or not. Um, and then it's going to record everything you do until you tell it to stop. So the way that we would do that is to press shift and record. We can see that record is flashing and it's basically resampling right now. Let's go ahead and activate some drums. We'll hit play. hit play, it's still recording and it's going to continue to record until we press the record button. So I'm going to turn off our drums for now. We'll scroll up and let's just make a new track. We'll switch it to kit, press shift and kit to start a new one. And we can see that it's instantly jumped into our resample folder on the deluge. Now we can hear the drums have come in because remember we recorded like a short bit of silence at the beginning and a short bit of silence at the end. So we'll bring that in and now we have that sound in here. Now obviously we might want to trim off the start. So I'll bring this up and make the start point just about there. And now our drum sound starts immediately. 
And of course, we could go into the waveform editor and bring up the endpoint as well. Don't forget that you can also zoom in to get some higher resolution as you do all of this. Awesome. So that's one way that we can resample instantly, but obviously we don't want to always resample instantly and be going in and trimming off the silence at the beginning and the silence at the end. So just before we quickly go over the other ways of resampling, let's just have a quick look at where these resamples live. Basically, if I was to just try and bring up a new sample, we'll press back and we can see that there's a resample folder. It's living next to recordings, my multi samples. It's basically out in the open. And if you have a look at the folder hierarchy on this SD card, um, we basically just have a resample folder. If we bring that up, there's a bunch of resamples that I've got over the years. So we would want to scroll all the way to the end. And there's our final resample. Now, obviously I haven't cleaned out my resample folder in a while, but um, yeah, that's essentially where they're going to live. And every time you resample something, the deluge will instantly bring it up when you try to load in a new sample. So let's get out of that track for now. I'm just going to delete it. So like I said before, we obviously don't want to resample with that little bit of silence at the start in certain cases. So let's go over how to resample at the same time as your song beginning to play. So let's just turn every single track on for this one. And basically I want my resample to resample this entire bunch of loops, which is about this long, but I want it to begin right at the point that I tell it to. So what I'm going to do is press record and while holding that down, we'll press play. So now resample has begun. We have a couple of different options that we could do to stop it. If we press record and play again, it's going to stop immediately at the end of that loop. So if we make a new kit track, there's our sample and it begins and ends perfectly at the end of that eight bar loop. Now, did you hear at the end there that there's a little bit of delay going on at the end of my sound? So have one more quick listen. So as soon as I stop playing, there should be a little bit of a tail continuing on. So this recording, because it has stopped at the end of our loop, it hasn't picked that tail up. It pretty much stops and then loops straight back into the start of our track. So let's go back from here. We'll delete that one. So let's go through the same process again. We'll hit record and while holding that down, press play. And let's wait for these to start to reach the end. What I'm going to do is turn these clips off and then stop recording. Let's wait for that reverb and delay to finish playing. And now I'll hit record. With all of those clips now off, let's open up a new kit track. And there's our resample. We'll load that in. And just having a look at the waveform here, we can see that our sample plays, the song ends, but we still get that little bit of a reverb tail. Let's just bring the start point up to there so that we can hear it. Now, 
Now, the main reason I'm showing you this is because if you record your entire performance or if you record your entire track from a range of you, which follows the same process, you might want to continue on and just catch that little bit of a tail at the end of your song before the recording stops. Otherwise, you're not going to catch that tail and it's going to sound like your song abruptly comes to a finish. Let's remove that track. And just to show you, if we went into song view, we could record this entire arrangement. I'm just going to go to the last couple of bars here, have a quick listen. Maybe we'll zoom in for a little while. So if I wanted to record just from here, not the entire thing, I'm gonna hit record, this top button, and then play. So we can see that our resampling has begun. The track will come to a finish. We can hear that delay slowly fade out. And now I want to stop recording. If we go back into song view, we'll bring up a new kit track. We can see that as our recording stops, I have that little bit of a tail on the end. Perfect. So that is one way that you can record your entire arrangement out of the deluge and have it stored in a nice little WAV file for you to pop out, place into your computer, and then either further process in something like Ableton, or you could you know, start uploading it online and show everybody what you've made. We'll be covering exporting your tracks a lot more in a future video, but I just wanted to go over that because it's pretty much integral to the resampling side of the deluge. Now let's go into song view one more time. Um, just going to create a new track down here. Cool. I'm going to start a new synth with shift and synth. Let's just change the wave type to be an analog saw wave. Uh, we'll bring up second oscillator. I'm basically just trying to create a unique synth sound really quickly. Uh, we'll change this type to, yeah, maybe a triangle wave. Great. Let's uh, play around with the sustain and the decay. Great. And let's just throw in a little bit of an effect. Maybe we'll throw it on some decimation. Awesome. And maybe a little bit of bit crushing. And we'll throw in a little bit of release. Great. Not my favorite sound in the world, but we've made something. Now, as it stands, this is basically just a synth patch that's currently living on the deluge. Let's say we wanted to record that out as a sample, for example. Well, one way that we could go about that is by holding the record or resample button and pressing an audition pad. Or we could be in the isomorphic keyboard layer and do the same thing. And now we tell it to stop. So let's go back into song view. We'll create a new synth track, load up a sound. It's gonna say bottom to top. And there's our resample. Let's load that in. We can still up the release a little bit. Now we can apply even more effects processing to this. Quite a long reverb tail. 
So either way, this is just a really powerful way of recording out different samples. I guess, technically speaking, you could record different variations of the sample as you're going up and down in notes and octaves and then create your own multi-sample library. Then you could pretty much be taking the synth sound out of this and loading it into something like Ableton or something else that supports multi-samples and then you've got that patch stored on a different device. I guess one other really useful feature of this is let's say, for example, that we had the reverb turned all the way up on the largest setting. Now that's quite a lot of reverb, but let's say we wanted more reverb than that for some reason. Well, the way that we would do that is to record out this sample. Wait for the reverb tail to stop. Great. Let's load up a new synth track. There's our sample. And now we can up the reverb even more and the release and have a listen. You could keep on doing this until you get multiple versions of that effect um, sort of living on top. So yeah, lots of different ways that you can go about doing this, lots of different fun, but resampling is a super, super powerful feature. Now, we're not really getting into audio recording or anything like that at this stage, but one thing I find resampling really powerful for is recording audio directly into the deluge, either through the built-in mic or for example, plugging my guitar into the line-in. Now doing that would create an audio track. And as I said earlier, we have a few less options available to us when it comes to mangling the audio from an audio track. So what I like to do is then resample the audio from an audio track, bring it into a kit or a synth track, and then chop it up and mangle it in a lot of different ways and sort of go about it from there. The amount of options available to you when you're doing this and sort of the amount of freedom you have to mess with samples and use them in different ways is nothing short of amazing and I absolutely love sampling on this device. It's really fun and it's really intuitive. Anyways, that's all I have time for today, guys. Hit the like if you like and if you don't, tell me why. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh,